the taiga biome is a cold and lonely place. Many people have never even heard the name before, even though it's the largest terrestrial biome on the planet. Taiga is a Russian word that means forest. The taiga is the forest in the extreme north, bumping up to the edge of the Arctic Circle. Any further north, and the trees cannot survive. Along this northern edge, the taiga yields to tundra. In the winter, conifers stand as sentinels in a snowy forest cathedral. All is silent, save the wind in the trees and the occasional echo of the gray wolf's howl. As the days grow brighter, the bitter cold of winter eases. Snow melts, trickling into streams that feed roaring rivers lined with gray glacial silt. Migrating birds return to their summer homes, and rivers turn red with spawning salmon. There are really only two seasons here, winter and summer. The summer is only a brief three months in most places, but during this period, the taiga explodes with life. Fire lilies and winter greens paint mountainsides in whites, vibrant blues, reds, pinks, and purples. Emerging from their winter dens, bears enter the sunlight for the first time with their new young. Having not eaten all winter, they're hungry. After they adjust to their life above ground, they bound down to lakes and rivers to feed on a bounty of salmon. Berries weigh heavily on bushes, providing additional forage for bears and birds. Bald eagles glide high above lakes, rivers, and shorelines, searching for fish swimming below. This is a place where plants and animals live in a delicate balance dictated by the seasons. Despite being so cold and remote, humans have had a profound influence here. Early man likely hunted the woolly mammoth and giant sloth to extinction. But modern man has caused more destruction here in the past 400 years than those hunters did in 10,000. Excessive hunting and trapping has brought to the edge of extinction some of the taiga's most majestic animals. And clear cutting has destroyed great swaths of ancient forest. The taiga biome today, despite appearances, is only a glimmer of what it once was. And we'll need to work quickly if we are to save what's left. The taiga is the world's largest biome on land. Stretching like a band along the top of the continents of the Northern Hemisphere, it covers about 11% of the Earth's land surface. There is no taiga in the Southern Hemisphere, since the equivalent latitude in the South is almost all water. The taiga biome has long, severe winters and short, moist summers. Its forests are dominated by conifer trees like pines and firs, which have needle-like leaves and bare cones instead of flowers. There are two types of taiga, dark and light. Dark taiga is where the spruces and firs dominate, and light taiga is where the paler green larches and pine trees are most common. In Alaska and most of Canada, conifers are the dominant trees as the soil is nutrient poor and plants must withstand harsh winters. In the Far East, geological and climatic factors create a scattering of taiga. The Siberian taiga has probably the world's largest tract of old-growth forest, even larger than the Amazon. The European taiga stretches east from Scotland to the Ural Mountains in Russia. It's cold and somewhat dry, filled with larches, scotch pine, Siberian spruce, Siberian larch, and English oak. In Scotland, thousands of years of forest clearing has all but eliminated most of the taiga. With it, large mammals such as the beaver, lynx, wolf, and brown bear have all disappeared. However, in Russia, humans have left the forest largely intact. Parts were cleared for farms, and hunting and fishing affected animal populations, but the Russian taiga is mostly as it was 2,000 years ago. You've got to be tough to survive in the taiga. The climate here is extreme. Temperatures in the winter are frightfully cold. The record for the Siberian taiga is 76 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. But in the summer, it can get hot, very hot, well past 100 degrees Fahrenheit. 
That means the temperature can vary an unbelievable 180 degrees. In summer, the ground is damp, and where drainage is poor, you'll find impenetrable swamps and bogs. The taiga's trees benefit from the otherwise humid climate, but need to be extraordinarily resilient to tolerate the huge variation in temperature. Why does it get so cold here? For most of the year, the sun's rays hit the taiga at a low angle. That means much of the heat is likely to be deflected back into the atmosphere instead of absorbed by the land. Also, the snow has a tendency to reflect most of the light and heat from the sun back into space, further cooling this region. Winds also have a significant influence. The polar jet stream often drags cold air from even farther north down into this region. In addition, frigid water currents flowing out of the Arctic further cool the coastal regions of the taiga. This means the taiga often extends further south along the coast than it does inland. The exception is northwestern Europe, where the warm Gulf Stream prevents taiga from growing along the coast. In most of the world's taiga, snow continues to fall through April and sometimes even May. This thick layer of snow insulates the soil and trees by trapping tiny pockets of air inside layers of powdery snow. This air serves as an effective insulator, much like a thick blanket. The taiga is mostly inhabited by birds and mammals, but there are a few amazing species of amphibians and reptiles. They have successfully adapted to survive in this challenging climate. While out and moving about, the Siberian salamander can withstand temperatures down to freezing. When it gets colder, it hibernates below ground, where it can withstand temperatures to 31 degrees below zero. When summer comes, taiga temperatures can be so variable that animals that would normally lay eggs on the ground don't because they would freeze. Instead, the lyserted lizard and the European viper act more like mammals. They give birth to their young live. Insect populations here explode when the temperature gets warm. Mosquitoes, gnats, and black flies thrive. And the farther north you go, the shorter the warm season, which makes these flying insects even more bloodthirsty. Most are born out of stagnant pools of water, so they're most abundant in areas near bogs and swamps. Salmon are especially important to coastal taiga regions. As they swim from the ocean up rivers, predators snatch them out of the water for a meal. Salmon are the favorite food of many taiga animals, including bald eagles and grizzly bears. The taiga is home to many wild animals, including caribou, deer, elk and moose, lynx, wolverines, bobcats, minks and ermine, snowshoe rabbits, wolves and red squirrels, bald eagles and snowy owls, gray wolves, and brown bears, to name a few. Surprisingly, fungi are also critical to the survival of this biome. You can't easily see them, but underground, fungi feeding tubes often envelop tree roots. They speed up the process of decaying organic matter and pass nutrients onto trees. They also produce antibiotics that kill or halt soil bacteria that might otherwise harm the tree. While taiga is mostly composed of conifers, in many places there are also some broadleaf trees such as birches, aspens, and poplars. These trees shed their leaves in the wintertime, but when conditions become unusually severe, they tend to be the first to die. Today, many of the species that originally inhabited the taiga can no longer be found. That's due to man's long history of hunting the largest mammals. In the first 13,000 years after crossing the land bridge from Asia, early humans wiped out saber-toothed cats, woolly mammoths, and giant sloths. Later, humans trapped and killed a huge number of beaver, mink, and other furry creatures until they almost disappeared from these northern forests. Today, fast-moving vehicles enable hunters to track prey more efficiently and cover more ground. As a result, even more animals are killed here each year. Scientific monitoring and carefully regulated hunting are vital to the survival of many of the taiga's remaining threatened or endangered species. 
and the trees are in danger as well. It's common for lumber companies to cut huge swaths of trees in taiga regions. In the 1990s, clear cutting accounted for 90% of Canada's harvested timber. Tens of thousands of acres are cut at a time, which leads to the mass destruction of old growth forests, which are now very rare. One solution is selective felling. This preserves trees of varying ages in the forest. Damming, mining, and lumber harvesting account for a great deal of pollution and destruction in the taiga. Mining pollutes rivers and the air, killing aquatic species and causing acid rain. It also contaminates water sources that might be used for drinking water. In the end, responsible forest management, which applies scientific, economic, and social principles to the use of forests, will be vital for preserving the Earth's largest terrestrial biome.